All right, well, good morning or good afternoon to our colleagues to the east of Tucson. Welcome to the University of Arizona James E. Rogers College of Law Faculty Book Talk Series. I am Teresa Miguel Stearns, Associate Dean and Director of the Daniel F. Cracciolo Law Library. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to this very special book talk for this very first open access textbook focusing on library and information science for legal information professionals. Introduction to Law Librarianship contains contributions from over 60 authors in 27 chapters, and it combines theory with practice for a nearly comprehensive overview of law librarianship as practiced in academic, law firm, and government law libraries. I can personally attest to the high quality and value of this textbook as I used it for the framework for a newly designed law library practice and administration class that I am teaching this very semester. I'm going to pass the microphone to Clinitra Stewart Nadel, who will be moderating today's book talk. Professor Nadel is head of professional development and research services librarian at the Allen Queener Massey Law Library at Vanderbilt Law School. She is also a lecturer in law, teaching both 1L and advanced legal research classes. Her scholarship focuses on incorporating diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility into legal research instruction, legal information preservation, and access to justice. Professor Nadel is one of the contributing authors to this book as co-author of the chapter, Navigating Your Career Goals, Government, Private, and Academic Law Librarianship, with Victoria de la Torre and Marcelo Rodriguez. Professor Nadel. Thank you so much, Teresa. I, I really am so honored to be here today, um, mostly because of the celebration of this wonderful resource and of two accomplished and dynamic law librarians that I have the pleasure to introduce today. Um, just a housekeeping note, we'll have a discussion for about 30 minutes, and then there'll be a, um, some time for Q&A after from the audience. So first, let me introduce Cass Laskowski. She's a veteran, a librarian, a gamer, a teacher, a Latina, a techie, a comic book nerd, and an empiricist and perpetual beta. She's currently the head of research data and instruction at the University of Arizona. And in that role, she leverages her many skill sets to bolster faculty scholarship, train legal train makers, and advocate for more inclusive work in library learning spaces. She regularly writes and presents about the impact of technology on libraries and legal practice, and she was a founding fellow of the Idea Institute on AI. Her, idea, her areas of interest include legal data, infrastructures, access to justice, ethical use of AI, and co-collaborative pedagogy that empowers learners. Welcome, Cass. Thank you for that very kind introduction. <laughs> 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 Our other editor is Zanata Joyner. She currently serves as Senior Reference Librarian at North Carolina Central University's Law Library. She was previously Digital Services and Faculty Services Librarian there before that. And she's also held positions at the University of Georgia Law Library and the Loyola University New Orleans College of Law Library. Among her many roles in professional organizations, Zanata is the incoming member at large for the SEAL Chapter Executive Board. And she was the 2018 recipient of the AA Double L Minority Development Award. She is one of the most insightful law librarians I've ever met, and so I'm glad to hear what she has to say today. Welcome, Sonata. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And Clinitra did not mention that she is also a newly elected board member. Oh, for thank the you. CEO. So excited thank for you. that. I will um, also note that Anna yeah, Toff Nielsen, oh, in yes. our and audience, is one. Uh, it's the other incoming. Yeah, <laughs> so and, it's a strong and, seal contingent. <laughs> Um, the two of you have really developed an amazingly comprehensive resource. Can you tell us about it? Surely. So the textbook is open access, available digitally. Um, but it's whew, over 60 authors, 20 some odd chapters in its current form. And it covers every single type of law librarianship that, that like the three major categories. And then within some of that, even variations that I hadn't and did not have thought about. And we're just really excited just that all the depth of knowledge in that textbook. And then the other thing about the textbook, it's designed to be hopefully usable in classrooms because it has you know, the objectives built in, which were designed by the authors. It has case studies inside called Concepts in Action. And at the end, for anyone who wants to learn more, it has those deep dive 
suggestions for further reading. So, Zanata, what was the impetus for this book? What was the inspiration for you both? All right, let me make sure I'm, you can hear me now, right? Yes, correct. Oh, okay, yeah, so thank you. So I think Cass encapsulated exactly what we, we have created. I don't know that that's what we set out to do. So <laughs> the impetus of the book, I don't know. Um, when we started, Cass is a visionary and she came to me and said, you know, she had this idea. And I, and, I, and I heard her idea and I thought it was a wonderful idea. She said, let's create the text that we didn't have, when, that we would have liked. And, and I thought about that more because um, it's true, right? Like we, textbooks in general um, at time, you know, they get outdated so fast. We're not sure, you know, the authors maybe are too far extended from the actual work that you'll be doing or the field that you're studying. So sometimes it's just tough, right? So she has this idea and she brings it to me. And so I think our thought and in our conversation, well, the impetus for us was to create a usable text, but to create an evolving text. So it's, 27 chapters right now, 60 authors, but because it's an ebook, because you know it's freely accessible, we hope that it grows and changes. So we have authors that have come back already and said, we'd like to revise or add additional information. Um, and we're welcome, we welcome that. We also are excited about the idea that we can bring more people on board and we're not bound by the structures of print publishing maybe, or even, you know, so or just some other like cost factors, et cetera. So we, like, there's a lot that we can do in this space. And I think that was exciting for both of us. I do think though, that what we set out to do and then how it has moved is there is, there, there have been changes. And I think they're, um, they're wonderful changes, but they're just, it, it, it wasn't necessarily what we envisioned. We probably envisioned something a little bit more narrow. Um, and that wasn't, but we had such wonderful response that um, it was it was overwhelming and it, it, it had to be included. So, yeah. So that that's how we that was that's where it was a nugget a, a kernel of brilliance from Cass and I will always say she was the visionary here and I was just fortunate that she brought me along so that we could really mold this into something that we could both be proud of. Wonderful. So speaking of the response that you got, how did you all decide who you wanted to contribute when you got the uh, responses to the call for chapters? What was your process for that? You want to talk about that? Some, I mean, I can, I can start, but let me, I'll let Cass jump in here too. Let me just say that we were really flattered um, and overwhelmed really by just the, the response. Um, so how did we choose people author? Well, one thing we had always set out to do is create an inclusive space. So it, we were not as concerned about credentials or background or even or, or some of the other things that prohibit um, others from joining the conversation. So for us, it was what can you contribute to the conversation? That was more important, the idea, less of some of the other things. And so for that, to create a truly inclusive space, that also means that you are choosing between outlines and ideas and can we mold this a little? And some authors, you know, responded differently to different level, levels of uh, editorial comments, right? And so, and also respecting what we're trying to do. So I think that's how we chose, but I, I would never, I would really hope that we open this up to hear from lots of professionals across the spectrum and across the experience and across the country and actually across the world. So we, we really want to create a, a living, breathing text where a, a lot of voices can jump in. But let me let Cass also say something. No, I, I just want to add to that is that when we were going through the process, Anand and I did have to field some emails where people started with the you know, almost like apology side of the emails. We're like, I don't know if you're really going to let me do it. Or, you know, I'm just a, li a lost library student or, you know, I own these sort of like ways of minimizing themselves. And we wanted to tell them like, no, you're exactly who we want it. Like, that's great. Yes. You so we actually do have someone who no longer, but was at the time a library student when they contributed. And we found that we, we had a deep discussion when we were choosing authors of whether we were going to just give it to one person or force people together that have similar topics. And we decided we'd rather make co-authorship because many of these topics, everyone at a different school does a bit differently. Everyone at a different firm does a bit differently, you know, different courthouses. 
So just bringing multiple perspectives like that together was good, but also just to give opportunities more instead of trying to be like, mm, we only have one space and it just felt very hard. So we wanted to make sure we could, So we and, and what ended up happening was that that decision to just be as inclusive as possible really saved us in the end and made it better. For <laughs> <laughs> sure. One of the things that's so great about this book is that there are several chapters that address diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. And I'm really curious why that was important for you to really put emphasis on that. Yeah, go ahead, oh, Cass. So I think it's important to Zanat and I, period. We met each other at AAA, but we got to really know each other working on the um, then DNI, turning into the DEI committee. Um, at AAA, and so it was just important to us, and we knew that was going to be a thing. And it didn't have as much in the first edition as we wanted, right? We had some authors that signed up for it, but you know, people's situation changes, and so we lost some of the chapters. But we were so excited that we had sort of like the accessibility chapter, which is incredible, right? The yes, chapter, and even what it was even better was that people were sprinkling that through the other chapters. So even chapters that aren't specifically titled with some sort of diversity topic, we're still giving that sort of like sprinkle throughout of understanding, which I, which I really appreciate. It was just something we knew we had to do. And as, as you know, moving forward, we're definitely trying to make sure that the next editions, the next editions have more and more of that because we, it's not something you can skip. It's something you can ignore in our profession. And it's not something we want to pretend you can just sort of sweep under the rug. It is needs to be at the forefront, which is why that stuff's in the first section of the book, the universal topic, right there out front. Like it's gotta be. But I think it's also important what you said too, Cass, about the idea that these topics are not discrete and they shouldn't be separated from other chapters, other topics. And we've talked about that and we've asked, um, you know, we've asked our authors, how can you include some of these things that we're interested in as well and how can you make it part of the discussion so i think that's important one that um it, you know dei and uh, all you know other acronyms but this idea of accessibility of diversity inclusion it's also equity has to permeate all chapters right at some space but the second thing is again i go back to the authors we did have a student uh, a author who was a, a, a student at the time not a student now and Cass is right we weren't saying, no, you have to have these credentials or this, this years of service before you have something to contribute because that defeats inclusion, right? The idea is that we all have something to share and trying to figure out a way that we can Im involve those voices and elevate those voices. And so that was really important to us. Um, mm -hmm. And you're right. And, and she touched about those emails that start off and you just, it breaks your heart every time. Like, why are you, why are you qualifying your perspective? Why are you, why do you feel that? Why do you feel what you have to contribute is not valuable? And in our small way, this is what we're trying to do um, for, for others is say, you're, you're always welcome at this table. So let's just figure out how, you know, the, the thinner sections of the book, we, we might want you at that table, but, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we want those people. So yeah. Wonderful. So your finished product is so polished that I think you've made it look deceptively simple about getting this done. Let's dig into the minutia. What was your organizational process? How much work was this? Oh, so this is a question <laughs> that I think did not put on me on purpose. Um, like you said, I'm a visionary, which means that, it, but that doesn't mean that I don't put the work in. I want to be very clear. It's like, but it means that sometimes I have an idea that I don't fully understand the amount of work that is in front of me. I just think it's important enough that I will figure it out. Um, so at first, it was just about creating structures of success. So I just sort of took some pedagogical principles and tried to create, I mean, at its simplest, it was like a box folder with just instructions to authors that said, here's what we want, length, how we want to organize, what we want to create, these sorts of things, like instructions. I tried to use a, a software uh, a software service called Aganti, which is a project management tool, failed miserably. We locked people in and then people who were locked in got dropped. Right. It, it was great. We didn't want authors to be like, communicating on something we made them pay for that seemed we're going to create open access textbook but you're going to pay to play it just didn't feel right but that just failed so then we just will manage timelines you all just do work and we'll check in so i think a lot of the work was that sort of checking in because 
all of our deadlines, COVID happened. <laughs> we, we've had the vision and the call before COVID and then COVID happened. So every deadline, we, so, so it was a lot more work than we thought because we were doing two things. We were doing the textbook, but we were also having to change everything, deadlines, communication, expectations, to give grace and space to people who were living in a right. unprecedented moment and still wanted sure. to contribute, but almost we almost lost a lot of people because they're like, well, now I don't, I'm like, no, 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 no. We will make this happen. We will support you. Please don't leave us. Right. And we were very grateful that authors like yourselves and others like stuck with us. Yeah. And so, you know, it made, made sense, made the book like eight months late, <laughs> but I'd rather have the book be eight months late than not have the book. Well, that's so true. You're right. People stuck with us. And so we, I, we can't thank the contributors enough because we did, you know, and, and you occasionally would get the emails that say, when is the new deadline? When, and we would, <laughs> you know, and, and again, Grace extended, but Grace asked for, please begged for at that point too, because we were, we were juggling a lot of responsibilities during this space. And also chapters even had to change some to respond to the conditions that our authors were under. So, and, 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 and so there were so many of those kind of things, but thank you to the contributors who really did hang in there with us because it was forthcoming for a long time there. And, <laughs> um, and it, it, but we got it, you know, we got it finally out, but it was, it was tough and it was tough, not just in their, you know, experience, but in ours too. And we were just very fortunate to have so many people who were willing to, you know, hang in there. So thank you. And wow. we are for people who just want timelines. It took days to look through our proposals. It took, you know, throughout months, several emails and communications. But then at the end point, for every time we had to review drafts, those two draft mm -hmm. phases and finals, that was weeks of work. And then finally getting it up and polished was weeks of work. So if, you, if you're curious, that's the TLDR, how much, how much time. And there's, there's also like, um, you're reading it, you're reading the draft, you're looking at Cass's comments and you pick up your phone and you're like, um, can you go to page four? Cause I don't know what you're <laughs> saying, <laughs> but we need to talk about this because that's not what I thought. And, you know, and there's that too. So, and then finding the time to do that. So yeah, so it takes, it takes a lot to, to coordinate and then also to create something that you, that you want to be somewhat um, consistent, right? You want some, it can't just be a, Patch, it is a patchwork, but it does have to have some universal theme and some universal divine, design threading through it. Otherwise, it does feel like a hodgepodge. So that takes that coordination took time for sure. Well, as a contributing author, thank you both, because I will say that in addition to this being just such a great project, you made it very clear <laughs> that you were showing us grace. So I think that I can speak for the contributing authors and saying that you worked with us really well. So thank you for that. Um, Staying on the editing question for a, a second, how heavy a hand did you want to have or did you decide to have in editing these chapters? And also, did the pandemic affect your editing process? I think so. I mean, I think there were times when um, proposals might not have been, well, okay. So authors submit a proposal and we took a look at it and we might make some suggestions, just some very gen, you know, general comments. And then the drafts would come and the direction was not in keeping with in step with what we were developing. And so you would have to kind of get back with them and say, listen, this is what we're doing. And I hear what you, where you're going here, but I don't think that exactly matches up. And more importantly, it, as we're piecing it together in some kind of logical order, it's out of tune with that section. So that I think, I mean, I, I don't know, Cass, is that more, is that accurate, less accurate or what were so, you thinking? I think largely we, we did a really good job. So the proposal stage was probably the stage we really changed people a lot because yeah. in the proposal stage, people were proposing kind of things you would submit to a collaborative edited like collection of random writings as opposed to a textbook. And That's so true. we brought them together to write textbook chapters on the topics they were proposing. It wasn't as though they were like, I wanna do something about ILSs. And I'm like, no, you're gonna go do reference services. It wasn't that off. So we bring <laughs> together and you know, you're gonna do access. But you know, we really didn't wanna change people's voices. We did wanna just no. make consistency. So when people were making outlines, that's when we were able to catch them and say, hey, you put this in the outline, right. the scope of this, that's not a textbook, that's exactly. an article. 
And that right. was where I really started to, to bring people in. And it was just because, and, and the authors responded really well to this. I said, remember in library school and remember trying to read for class and then ask yourself if you want to read what you're asking them, what you're, you're telling me you're going to write. And many authors are like, you know what, you're right. As like most students aren't want trying to read LLJ articles. They're not. We didn't want 18 million citations and everything. We, did, we just wanted this to be that type of textbook. So that's where we really tried. And so it's just because the authors had, had this like strong desire to share, which I love. Don't get me wrong. It was a great passion. But the problem is that every one of these chapters could be a book. Let's be very oh, clear. Oh, for sure. Right. So we had the hardest part about that was less about changing people's entire chapters or heavy handedly like, no, you will write a chap a paragraph that says what I want you to say and more about like, I know you have more to give, but just give a little less for us right now. Just a little less, right. please. <laughs> well, understand the audience, like you said. So that was really important too. So I guess that's what I mean when I say more general comments too, because we don't want to be so heavy handed that you're, you're specifying how and what people write about. More, this is the general direction that we need you to go to. We need you to be cognizant of our of our reader, and then also the practicality. So Kaza talked about this at the beginning about the concepts in action. And I do think that's one of the strongest um, features of the text. I really think that for a lot of students, they need to see practically how this plays out in the world. Because, uh, you know, textbooks have a, a history of just being so far removed from what you do. And in, in a profession such as this that is evolving, this is a area where these concepts and actions can constantly be revised, right? We can add to them, we will change them, they will be, but those are really important because students really need to see, this is the day in the life, this is what you do, this is how would you confront this situation? What would be your thought process there? And I think we've received a lot, that I see Teresa in the comments, yeah, but we've received a lot of feedback that people really, have found those to be the most useful. In fact, I find them useful even as a, as, a, as a professional, right? I still sometimes will refer to them and think, okay, I haven't had this experience, but this is where I'm at. And I'm wondering, um, you know, what, what, what in this chapter might be able to help me navigate this situation? So I, I offer that too, to say that that was different for some of our authors. They weren't familiar with writing those and um, they weren't really sure. So that we would offer some feedback on too. We just try to give you an example, but we were really careful not to show people a template of what we wanted. And sometimes they would ask for it, but we didn't want to do that. Um, and by we, I mean cast. She did not want to do that. <laughs> Both of you. Uh, no, but I mean, she's right. I mean, she's right though. You, she, was, she was definitely right here. I think the, you know, the person I am is like, well, just give them something, you know, add words and stir. But she was like, no, you can't do that. And I, and she, and I learned she was right. It, it's much better. It's a much better um, product if you let people have the space to do what they do best. So. And one of the things that I think can't be understated is that this is an open access source. So it's accessible to the, you know, the largest number of people. What made you decide to go that way? What were your considerations when you were deciding about how to disperse this? Uh, I wouldn't do it any other way. I, when I came with this idea to deny, that was just the, the bottom line. Um, principally, I, I know that there's already barriers to entry in the profession. We don't necessarily have the largest pool of professional development funds as a profession. I just did not, and I don't need royalties. And I also know that from just some of the research, like the royalties I would have probably gotten on any book I would have written for this profession would have been like little piddly amounts. They would have bought me as like Starbucks coffee or something. It would not have been worth it. And so we've been part, and I know Zanata would jump right on board because she's also been part of these, you know, pipeline discussions. And library school is expensive, right? Law school is expensive. And as we're trying to think about what it means for the future of the profession, the last thing I want to do is create a textbook that one, had, a, had that huge financial barrier to entry because I don't get to choose what they charge for it. I don't, I don't even get to say that, they decide. And then two, we really wanted to have the capability to change it at any time. And you just don't get that control. So those two aspects, we wanted to make sure we weren't creating something that just perpetuated a system of, you know, inaccessibility. And we wanted to ensure that there was that ability, that control to continue to grow because we knew it wasn't going to be something that, you know, like 
in one year, something changed. I mean, no one saw COVID coming. If we would have actually finished this book before COVID, it would have needed an update. Yeah. Oh, right. Right? oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's getting an update now. But what I'm saying, right? So, so the idea that, that so then how do you get a new text? So the students have to pay for a new one every year? No, I wasn't having that. It was a big mm -hmm. no for me. And Zanata did not fight me on that at all. I want to be very clear. I said it. She's like, yeah, why wouldn't you? And I said, okay. Right. No, I mean, I, I, again, she's the visionary, but she's, she was, I mean, I, I agreed with her and for me, it was the access part. And it was also just, again, it's an evolving text. And I think that's what, what this, this medium allows, right. It allows us now to update, but it also allows us to add. And, you know, as time goes on, we'll see, like, there may be sections of the text that, you know, might not always be there. I don't know, but I do know that this affords us that flexibility. Um, and again, it's openly accessible and that that's very important. So to us, and I think to our authors too. Definitely. First thing we, yeah, the first thing we did was have them all sign that contributor agreement and we got no pushback, zero no. for anyone who wanted to write them. Like nobody said no. Right. Everyone's like, yeah, of course, that's fine. And sent it right away. <laughs> sure. So nothing goes exactly as planned, as we know. What did you learn anything unexpected, or was there anything unexpected that happened during the process that made you think, "Oh, wait, we didn't consider that"? I am a worse line editor than I ever really admitted to myself. <laughs> that's that's number one. Um, um, so I think. What did we learn? Well, you know what was unexpected. Well, well, exactly the. The pandemic was definitely unexpected and then the timelines but i do think that's so okay that's unexpected i think what was unexpected we both talked about was sometimes a reluctance um of the authors that we you know they would have submitted and and then i and i and i think it's a consequence of what we were dealing with globally so let me say that but just oh they're not going to be able to contribute you think oh man that was going to be so good we were really looking forward to these folks um, getting their chapter included and, and for different reasons, like, you know, personal, professional, and then again, globally, um, they just weren't able to, but again, because this is an evolving text, we can now add them. So now that maybe things are starting to settle down, those authors, we can come back to them and say, hey, we would love for you, because we would like for them to come back to the project, even if maybe that, the date we were pushing for um, wasn't feasible. So I think that was surprising to me. Um, what wasn't surprising is deadlines get blown because of every writing project I've ever participated in. I think we all know that our, um, our higher angels tell us that we'll get it done by a certain date, which is what, you know, <laughs> but the reality is that it's tough. It's super tough. So I don't think that was surprising. I do think how long you know, we got it pushed out, but it, frankly, it, it really was not from a lack of hustle. It was just, it, it was tough. It was just a tough time, so. I think for me, another thing that, you know, was surprising is we tried, I tried really hard in the beginning was not to give the authors as much guidance as we could. And we tried, and I did like research on textbooks. How long is a normal chapter, right? Because they were, before we even had them writing, I wanted to make sure they knew what were, how many words, why did I choose those number of words? Like I, I tried to do the research Right. But even with that research, it's just completely different. And so there were some chapters that the drafts came in and they were, they, they, it was almost as if they saw our vision. And there were some chapters where the, the content was great, but the, you know, like we just needed them to or reorganize or like, you know, like just move some things around or, or try to make the, the chapter itself flow. Or we would, you know, we would learn from a different chapter. Someone said something and we'd say, Hey, can you maybe reference to, this topic? Right. We didn't mean to just add something to you, but we heard this come up, <laughs> it's relevant to you. Could you add? And, and, and so we tried really hard when we were asking for those those types of changes to be great. Like if, if it's a no, it's a no. But for sometimes it was just sort of like, it's a different writing style and you had multiple authors coming together. And sometimes we had to be the ones to make unity in the collaborators writing. This is true. Uh, this is true. Yeah, because uh, working with people is, is interesting always. And when you have multiple collaborators, you could and and some you could tell there was a switch in voice or change and and so helping people to get some kind of you know a, a more integrated like chapter like a, a more uh, cohesive right alliance because you do want the multiple voices but it it, it needs to sound it, it needs to read in a way that the reader can follow so I think that was 
um, that was definitely surprising sometimes that um, how hard it could be, you know? Well, cause I, I think I just never had to do that. To, like doing it with your own collaborators is different than doing it to somebody, a different group. And so For it sure. felt like going from somebody in the choir to going to the choir director. And I'm like, how do I get those people to want to be harmonious without feeling like I'm just being mean? Because I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just like, hey, you're not, <laughs> pitch, you know, yeah. um, because well, people are dealing with enough. So we weren't trying to come up, you know, and in, in that sort of with that tone. We we're just sort of like, this just feels a little disjointed or this is said here, but doesn't get covered in this section where you could you add this? Um, and I actually think, like, for example, one of the, I guess, least uh, traumatic ones, like in your chapter, I think someone had a heading in one of the, the three parts. I was like, hey, can you add that awesome heading to all of yours? And and you guys just mm -hmm. did it. And that's right. all it was. It, it just helped to make it like flow. And it wasn't though the chapter wasn't great. It was just like that, like I could I could just imagine in my head as a, as a student mm -hmm. being like, well, what is the answer to that question for these other two parts? Right. right. And so we were just answering that in advance. And so that was the kind of thing we were, I just did not expect, didn't know how to do, wasn't sure I was going to have to be like how much time that's going to take or how to convey that, that, just that messaging, that collaboration was just new to me. Mm -hmm. So I think it's sometimes difficult for someone who creates something wonderful to sit back and take in the enormity of it. Now that you've had some time to reflect and the first edition is done, still working on the future, um, how does it feel? How does it feel to have uh, contributed to the literature in this way? Surreal? Mm -hmm. How so? Right, like I don't think I even understood the gravity when she first, <laughs> yeah, like again, Cass was, was, this was, I mean, this was, she had a vision and she knew where this could go. And I think I was, I don't know if I even but, like thought that, the, right, the bounds of that. And then um, uh, Teresa was kind enough to invite me to her class not long ago. And they're used, as she mentioned in the introduction, like she's using the text, you know, to reshape for some parts of her class. And, you know, I'm meeting with the students and you're talking and you're working through some of the concepts in action, but if not, the specific ones from the text, like some other ones that I've added personally. And you're thinking, wow, okay. So we, so this is, this is a thing, right? <laughs> so this is a thing and these students really need this foundational understanding of some of these subjects. And at this point, um, this is the most um, relevant or the newest, right? The newest information again, because it's an e-text. So like, it, it just was surprising to me. I, I, I guess it didn't even occur to me until months later mm -hmm. that for some, for our students that we are hoping to pipeline into our profession that we're, we want to bring along with us. The, the, one of the first introductions to our profession is through this text. And that, that was, that was very humbling mm -hmm. um, that, in that a lot a, of ways. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And I think, so, for me, the reason it's still surreal, um, I mean, we get tons of positive feedback and we tried to share that with our authors recently, is, is that for me, while Zanata and I like brought people together and, and I am not trying to discount that work. There was a lot of that work to bring it together. Just, I think I'm still just in awe of the book because of what it stands for. Because of, I mean, mm -hmm. 60 people wanted so badly to give their time for free right. when they don't have time right to mm -hmm. share their knowledge with the future and did so like every single chapter we read we knew the authors took it seriously we've all been in the profession long enough to know people who do not take their assignments seriously <laughs> will write a blog post or an article and you can tell they phoned it in like let's be i'm being very forthcoming right like th that happens that was not the way we felt about any chapter we got there was never a conversation that Anna and i had we may have changed some wording we may have asked for some stuff but every single person approached this not as a, a line on their resume not yes. as some accolade but as a moment to really just give. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, that's what's surreal to me is that this is just a, this is a, a huge gift from the profession to the future. And I love it. That's I think so. Very... You're absolutely right. It's, it's such a service. It's such a service though. It's such a service and it's such a service from different 
places in professional development, different places and spaces in your workplace, different places. Just, it, that's so important because I think what we have a tendency and across all walks of life is just to rely on certain people to give us the map. And what this is trying to do is, is there's, there's other ways here and we've got to come at it from all these different ways because mm -hmm. it does have to help new law, law librarians join us, expand, change us, <laughs> diversify us. We need that, we want that, but we've got to give voice to that. So I think so, I, I, it is humbling though. <laughs> right. So now that the first edition's done, what are the plans for updates for this? And then in general, what's coming up next for both of you? Do you have other scholarly focuses that you wanna, you wanna write about or what's happening with you all? Second edition is currently in progress. This is true. Mm -hmm. uh, some authors are already updating. We have at least, I think, five new chapters coming in. Um, one on empirical. Actually, I don't want to give them out yet because I don't want to, if they don't show yeah, up. Yeah, don't spoil it. Right. Don't spoil <laughs> it. But, well, but there might be more authors, than five, too. Okay. So. We, so we're still, we are rolling basis, always accepting submissions. Um, but so the second edition is in progress, and we hope to have at least a full, like a second edition with some substantive changes you know, uh, in the end of July. So almost like one year celebration of the textbook with a second edition. Um, so that's upcoming. And then as far as other scholarly focus, I start my PhD in the fall. So I'm just like, I don't need any other projects. <laughs> Congratulations though. That's Thank wonderful. You. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so what's upcoming? So more service to um, our profession for me, as you mentioned, SEAL. And so we'll, Clinicia and I will be working together more closely and I'm excited about that, but more service there um, and committee work and things. So for me, really a, a return to some of the things that I do enjoy, which is meeting a lot of the people that I haven't had a chance to get to know in our profession. And this has been one vehicle for me to expand my network, but also to learn and grow. So for me, that's what's coming up. Um, probably some more work. Um, on instructional modeling and how we can um, make our spaces in this hybrid. I don't know about, I was teaching in a hybrid, trying to figure that out. Like uh -huh. we, we, we got the virtual learning. We, you know, there's a lot of text about that. There's a lot about in-person and traditional models, but we definitely have this hybrid that I don't think is going away. And we've got to figure out, well, I have to figure out how to make those spaces. Well, one, instructive, informative, but also inclusive. And I'm, I'm struggling. Uh -huh. So- uh -huh. That's where my that's where I'm going to be focusing some of my time on that, and then telling our story is always something that Cass and I talk about, and you know, Clinicia, we talk about this too. Uh -huh. This idea that we don't celebrate our profession enough, uh -huh. we just don't. So um, the people who've chosen this career are some of, are just so extraordinary, and I mean, these sixty <laughs> authors are just a sliver of all the extraordinariness out there. So we want to kind of harness all that. And we also want to, you know, celebrate it. And so I think that's something in general that we'll, uh -huh. we'll just move forward with. Yeah. And just to clarify, are you two saying that you're dedicated to continuing to update this on a regular basis? I know you've got a lot going on, but yeah, this I mean, will continue to be updated. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, I think that it has to be, it has to yeah. be, it's a commitment. So it's not just a one-off for us. This is a commitment to, right evolving this into as it as it moves and grows and changes until uh, I guess we're relieved of our duties and then it becomes a, something that someone else we pass the torch on to some other editors right but right now this is our commitment yay for open access passing it on will be real easy <laughs> <laughs> um Cassie you mentioned accepting new chapters. Um, should if people are interested in proposing a chapter, should they email you and yep. Donata, or how should they proceed? Please do email either of us or both of us. Just what your idea is. That's it. The proposal need not be fancy. I want to write about X, and Donata and I will tell you whether X has been covered, whether you know you should cover Y because Y is more alive. Like we'll just, but yeah, just let, an email, two three lines, we'll get there. Wonderful. So I do want to save time for questions from the audience, and we've already had several come in. The first um, that I'll mention is, um, with the new editions that you'll be doing, are you going to archive old editions of the book? They're archived in Heinz Spinelli Law Library reference shelf. Oh, 
Okay. Right. So, so that's there. Okay, great. Um, do you have tips or suggestions for other people who might want to put together a book? What, anything that you can recommend that they do towards success? Um, well, I think it's a wonderful idea. I think the tip is to be dedicated to the project, but I think you have to be dedicated to the mission, not necessarily the subject. And um, again, the, when Cass and I first talked about this and how she described the vision, mm -hmm. it, it, was, it became clear that you had to buy that. You had to buy into that because the nights, the late nights, the early mornings, the and hundreds of emails that you need to answer. I mean, you have to buy into this, that we're doing something bigger than just um, a book, right? Mm -hmm. That we're trying to do something bigger. So um, if you're writing a book, I mean, I think you just have to decide like, what, what do you, what are you trying to accomplish? What is your goal? And then once you decide that and you set your eyes toward that, it makes it easier to figure out um, how you will shape your work. But um, I think I highly recommend that others, colleagues, students, friends, other people, I highly recommend that they embark on um, similar projects, different projects, but yes, get your, get your voice out there. So Zanata speaks well to the mindset. Um, as far as the like practicalities of it, if you're writing for yourself um, or writing with groups, organization, like Figure, if you're writing for others, figure out an organization system, everyone, like everyone will work. When we talked about it, I put it on box because everyone can go to a box folder. Uh -huh. Everyone uh -huh. needs Word documents. And we gave them exact, like we, we will, so have a clear idea of what you're asking people because you're going to get questions. And if you can refer those questions back, yeah, sometimes you'll have to expand. But if you don't start with that a clear idea about like what exactly you're telling them to do, you're going to fail. And then tracking that stuff. So we had Excel sheets with all the authors, all the emails so that I could just do mail merges. We had, you know, like I was tracking what was in, what it was coming, what hadn't come in, who I needed to talk to, what was, you know, what was falling. And not all of it worked well. I've moved it to Notion and I'll share that eventually. I just don't want to overwhelm people at the present moment. Um, but, you know, like that project management aspect was very, very, it needed to be done because it would have been really easy to have been overwhelmed by email and lost track of everyone. And the authors were, I mean, you, they had their focus, but it, you know, so, but that doesn't mean that you, they want to not feel cared about and they feel cared about what you're sending, you know, emails to everybody and you're informing okay. people that what's, you know, like that transparency, that communication, um, you like, you have to take moments out of your day where you feel overwhelmed and remember that you owe it to people you're asking something of to okay. give them to some that. clarity right. or guidance. Yeah. And it's not always easy. Right. Another question from the audience. Have you given any thought to an introduction to law libraries text for allied professionals as opposed to library science students? And if so, what, what do you think about that? I'll say right now, I haven't thought about it at all. I am thinking about it now. Uh, Me too. As I was going to say, I hadn't thought about that. But that's a wonderful idea. I, I, yes, I love that. But I had no, I honestly, I had not thought about it. It's a wonderful idea though. So um, I'm not sure who, who asked that question, but if you want to reach out, let's talk about this. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if it's something that w we could do, but I don't know if it's not something we couldn't support. So yeah, yeah. Oh, right. it was Dawn. Yes, oh, okay, Dawn Smith. Yes, I will, all right. Have, so I will, you have our info, Dawn, reach out. And I'll reach out to <laughs> Dawn too. <laughs> We only have a couple more minutes, but I do want to ask this other audience question. Um, what experiences uh, do you suggest to current law librarianship students to help prepare them for entering the profession? Committee work is usually big number one. Um, and just group work of some kind. So teaching, if you're going to teach, that's always great, but some sort of like and I don't mean in classes because class groups are just never the same as actual like colleague groups. Because usually if you're in a job, at least everyone wants to make sure that they don't get fired. If you're all in a class, the, the, the incentive structures are different. But like trying to find ways as a library student to just find colleagues, to so find a library or somewhere, you know, like just that's why committee work does a really good job because you'll have that sort of opportunity for group work to just build connections and understand how you communicate. Because the biggest hurdles for me were learning communicating with my peers understanding what they were doing, what I was doing and organizing our work and staying right. And all of that, all of those skills happen with committee or group work together. For sure. I think that's important. I also think um, 
I think you notice it um, there for a long time, I, at least I, that's the impression I get. There were a lot of people entering law librarianship who had come from other fields or other experiences. So they brought those experiences with them. I'm noticing that some of the newer professionals that I interact with maybe don't have that depth of outside work mm -hmm. or employment or experience. And so it's tough, right? Because um, so much of what we do is shaped by what you can bring to it, right? So I think it's nice to have job descriptions, but I think we all have experienced the idea that what we do day to day and has is changing and it, it changes based on our skills, our interests, what we care about. And so, and what, um, and reflexively what the profession needs, right? So I think that the, what Cass said about committee work is crucial, but I also think you have to hold yourself out to be a person that wants to engage. So I sometimes hear people say, well, I, I don't get selected or I, I didn't want to volunteer because they wouldn't need me. And I think they always need you. We always need you and we want you, but um, you have to come out and let us know, like, please put me on a committee, please sign me up for this because we, you know, we, we just don't know. And there's different, there will be different times in your life when you can engage more deeply with your colleagues and sometimes you can't, but I think you do have to set yourself out that you're willing and able and interested in participating with the others because, you know, we're, we're certainly not going to write your name, Clinitra, on a committee that you never expressed interest in, but <laughs> You know, I will, because I know Clinitra. <laughs> and I would do and it. she would do the same. <laughs> exactly. But and I would do the same. I would never have asked Anada to write this book with me, or, to, or to, not write it, to edit this book with me, if I hadn't experienced just how on it and how much I could mm -hmm. trust her to get stuff across the finish line. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so. One of the other things I think is great about the book is you don't know what you don't know. So I think because you've made this so comprehensive, any student could look at this and say, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even know I should consider this. I'm, I'm so glad that happened. So um, Me too, though. But me too, Clinicia. Like, I, mm -hmm. I read things and I'm like, whoa, right? Because my experience has just been in academic law right. libraries. And so I would read other, from other um, types of librarianship. And I would think, wow, that's a thing. Okay. All right. I'm <laughs> I'm, uh, right. Like, and it was just so interesting to me. I, I, you don't know. You're right. You absolutely don't know what you don't know. Right. So we only have a couple of minutes left. Any last words that you want to leave your audience with? Cass? I am forever grateful to all the authors that contributed to what I think is just such a valuable, valuable text. I mean, I work with some of the people in this. I have friends, some of the people who, who <laughs> did. Um, and I'm, I've gotten and I've made more friends from this textbook. Um, and, and I just, I was forced to read every chapter. And I, I, I'm being honest, right? To edit them, you have to read them. And so I just got to see how brilliant people were. Oh, for sure. And, and so those are my last words is, yes, we edited it. I think getting people together sometimes because everyone sort of wants to do a thing and then nobody moves on it. So that is big. So not, I'm so glad that Don and I were able to do that to be sort of that motivating factor. But I want to be very clear that I am gracious because my vision would have been for not, and the not a support of that vision would have been for not if the contributions weren't at the level they were, if the authors weren't as giving as they were. So thank you. And to future authors, I will thank <laughs> you in advance. And I want you to know I will be appreciative in advance. <laughs> and there is commentary I did see in the chat that we're really good editors to work for, for with. So that's why I. Zanata, any last words <laughs> to the audience? Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I echo a lot of what Cass said, but I also want to make a special acknowledgement to Teresa for the forward, for sure. Um, honestly, she's such a champion of both of us. And I, and I, I really do feel grateful for that because um, it, it, it is humbling again for people to want to contribute to something that you have this idea and then, you know, you just don't know who's going to get on the train with you. Mm -hmm. And so we've been very fortunate to hear from people we admire, um, professionals that, you know, we've been watching their careers and now to kind of change the, the dynamic is interesting, but all the authors and all the authors we haven't yet worked with. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Honestly, thank you. Because it, it really could not happen without 
without you all. And it, it really is an important mission that we're on to make sure that we bring people to our profession, understanding all the intricacies, all the wonderfulness, all the depth, the intel, the brilliance. Like we really are excited about this. So thank you. Thank you to both of you on behalf of the contributing authors and uh, the public in general, everybody who's here, thank you for putting this together. The book is at lawlibrarianship.pressbooks.com. Uh, please do take a look and thank you for joining us today. I'll turn it back over to Teresa. I just wanted to say thank you as well. Thank you, uh, Professor Noodle, Professor uh, Joyner and Professor Leskowski. What a wonderful book talk we had today. Thank you to the entire audience for joining us both in person and on Zoom. We will, we, we have been recording this and we will post it to our YouTube channel uh, within, hopefully within a few days. So thank you so much. Thank Congratulations you. once Take again. Take care thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Did, did we stop recording? Let's go.